Hey everybody. We'll just uh, wait a couple minutes and hopefully you get quorum. Hey folks. Hey Steve. I'm always a little scared when my machine says that it needs to update Flash Player. I thought Flash Player was like gone like 10 years ago. Uh, unless you're watching, I think it's uh, Xfinity still uses it, although I got rid of Xfinity. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm not sure which came first, the thing to die. All right, we're getting close to uh, having a core. Maybe, maybe we already have core. Who's doing dance music? It was nice, but I don't know where that came from. Um, I just realized, I don't know if I ever got an accept from VBATS, um, but we're auto recording, so we can d deal with that. Um, yeah, I did not get an accept from Vincent. Um, so this may be, this may be quorum. Uh, for this evening, although I do have uh, a couple more accepts. Um, so I did update HackMD. I don't know how many people saw the email I sent about 30 minutes ago, but um, if not, the HackMD has a short agenda. Um, and so I think, I think probably, um, most pertinent to our discussion last month. Um, there have been several pieces of, of information moved into GitHub. I think most people have seen um, that the charter uh, is now there in the TOB repo. Um, and there has been a merged PR um, that we're now trying to make sure it has the right number of LGTMs um, because it is a material change to the, to the charter. Um, so that's also linked from HackMD. So if you see the two thirds LGTM on 74, that's what that's referring to. Um, I think the only thing I meant to ask Chris, and I see you're here in the meeting. So, um, What's the status of the website? Because I know there was also a repo being worked uh, with opencontainers.org. It's uh, almost ready for preview. Let me, I could probably share. It's not done yet. It's got to be cleaned up, but you could look at it here. There's the little Netlify and the repo, but I'll, I think I'll have it ready for next time. We're almost there. Just give us a little, little more time. Okay, cool. Well, that's good to hear. Um, so yeah, that that um, solves a few of the um, comments that that we had last time about um, you know how how do we materially update some of these um, documents and information, and so that's uh, good to see progress happening on that front. Um, so that's all I was going to say about updates. Um, 
Anyone else have anything that that we discussed last time that there's an update on before we move on? All right, hearing none. Um, the other thing I added to the agenda is uh, I obviously had hoped to do this slightly earlier than 30 minutes before our call, but oh well, that's kind of life right now. So I have a draft PR. Um, I'll, I had it posted in the email. It's also on the agenda, but I'll put it here in chat if that's easier for anybody. Um, so, you know, most of our March and April TOB calls ended up focusing around this topic of, you know, do we have some kind of criteria or guide that we can put together to even discuss, you know, the proposals that are um, on our plate? Um, so I see Steve and Sam, I haven't even read your comments yet. Um, but yeah, so this is my attempt at something a little bit larger than just that project. Um, you know, should my project be in the OCI question? It's sort of, you know, what is a very, very, very brief, what is the OCI, which mostly borrows from the website? You know, who uses it? Um, and then, and then the uh, project categorization and should my project be in the OCI? So, uh, again, I know people haven't had time or maybe time at all to look at that. Um, maybe it's worth uh, discussing. Uh, but again, the intention is that we've kind of put off um, handling these proposals, the, the two PRs we have in the TOB repo, uh, because we wanted to have some kind of framework to even have that discussion. So it's not just a random, I think it should be, or I think it shouldn't be. So that, that's essentially the goal of at least that section of this. Um, and again, I've tried to capture the fact that we've discussed this now uh, in March and April. So hopefully not starting from scratch, but kind of taking into account our discussions over the last few months. Um, so I will stop there for a moment and, and see if any, again, uh, thanks Sam and and uh, Steve for some early comments. Um, has anyone had a chance to look at this? Um, I don't, I don't want to belabor, you know, having people read it on the call, but that's, it seems like this is our core topic that leads us to being able to have a, a decision process on Emochi and Oros. And, it, and again, I said I'd shut up, but um, I think the the part that probably should um, get the most attention is is really that last you know fifteen lines of of that proposal in markdown you know should my project be in the OCI this is really where we had discussed you know how how do we tell people before they even make a proposal what the OCI is valuable for and so I tried to put three items there that I think relate to our discussion, but that may be the net of, of what we want to talk about, as well as the, the buckets, uh, specs, conformance tests, libraries, reference implementations, and see if we're missing anything there. I, I, I don't know this is the recent can of worms to open up, but I'm just looking at this and, you know, and, and, I'm glad Derek's here because he can chime in on this as well as the, you know, the, the category specifications. We talked about the runtime spec, image spec, distribution spec, and then we've been having this conversation recently. Is art, um, artifacts a spec? What does that mean? Um, we talk about images in one places, then we're talking about things generically uh, in others. How, and then the idea that emoji and to, in, in auras even are reference implementation. So maybe I just didn't read down, should my project be in the OCI yet? But when I get to the specifications, like what type of projects exist in the OCI, that's where I'm kind of tripping up and how do we close the loose ends that we've created there? 
Uh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I'll let you answer first. Oh yeah, no. It, um, I I think my only comment for before you go is I, <laughs> I just realized that in all these categories I don't I talk about artifacts a few times, but I guess I do have a uh, a hole here, and the artifacts is definitely an approved project under the OCI, but I didn't fit it into one of our categories. So, well, to be fair, I think that's it's standing out because we we've been kind of going back and forth for good reasons, but I think we need to close on it. Is it a spec? Is it a version spec? Is it a, just a doc that explains how to use the other specs? And if so, is that, what's the stability of it? We'll have some of that conversation tomorrow, but I, I think it, it adds some relevance here because the conversation we've had in these two open issues from Matt Farina is surfacing back to questions that I think this group should close down on what that uh what our scope is what is how do we want to handle those issues well i mean would you consider iana a spec or some of those other like basically cataloging services that are like standardizing other specifications i guess like we I mean, we're not trying to say that is open and Iana open is containers like, is well, well, right. yeah sorry yeah, sorry, I know there's a lag. <laughs> yeah, I was just oh, going to say- looks a, a drinking water, a drinking, well, drinking something, he won't disclose what it is, that's fine. Um, uh, but I, I, that actually might be part of the conversation. And, I, and again, I'm not trying to hijack this for a different conversation, but like IANA, uh, the artifact stuff is not meant to be a, just a clearinghouse. In fact, IANA becomes the clearinghouse of media types. The artifacts document, I'll just call it for that for now, is a specific definition of how you define things to go into um, OCI. So, okay, I think I'm 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 trying to not turn this into a discussion of is artifacts a spec and should be version or not. I guess I was trying to figure out is what we're trying to do here give clarity to what we did there, or maybe the problem is we don't really have an agreed clarity on what the artifacts repo does represent because in my mind it is a spec and i think maybe derek and i aren't the description evolved a bit and maybe we maybe we back out of that for now and we have that tomorrow well maybe i guess the word standard is is maybe maybe a better use case like or a, a better word to use there than just like specification because i mean the whole point of open containers is to kind of establish this like common standard across the ecosystem and a specification mm -hmm. is one way to do it. I think uh, the artifacts repo is another way to do that. Um, just to have a place where that's neutral that that makes some claim about kind of what's supported or what should be supported or kind of just acknowledging some of these things. Um, but the word standard like beyond, is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean beyond that like I think the problem is when you start introducing projects and implementations of these standards, like that's, that's, that's where it gets a little trickier. So yeah, I mean, we can have that discussion, but that's, it's kind of like, it's, it's not a tangent. It's just like, it's kind of orthogonal. I think it's discussion in terms of like when discussing the other types of projects. I, my, the I mean, reason I'm trying to bring it up of, is we have sorry. very clear specs, right? by all means, runtime image and distribution have APIs, they've got versions, people write code directly to those APIs. There's no if, thens, or buts about it. Um, there's, and then I'll go to the other end that uh, the, the OCI tools, um, runtime, run C for instance, and um, are implementations of that spec and tooling around that spec and that, I guess to some extent is the argument that Alexa has for Mochi and for uh, for Josh for Oras, um, and they become generic tools for others to use. Is there? I don't think that Artifacts is just a documentation of how to use these things because there are specific things that are stated in there that you would have to follow for it to um, to be consistent across registries. Uh, or for people to understand the pattern by which to use. 
and registry operators will need to have implement certain things per the image spec and so forth, but it, it provides clarity around that. Is that a, a middle ground? Is it, are you saying that's a standard, a document, or is it, we should just make it a spec and there's really only two categories that we put in OCI, there's specs and there's reference implementations that become assistive tooling. Libraries, tools. I mean, personally, I don't have anything against having like um, a standard way to do something or a standard way of outlining something. I, I think it's, I mean, it's really up to, um, I would say the folks, you and, and Derek and everyone else working on artifacts to decide what, what in particular um, you'd want it. Because I think that the thing I was going to say actually is that um, regarding the original conversation about the scope table and about the whole scope of, of, um, of the charter and all the rest of it is that we really should sit down and, and do a proper reg. I know that we've removed the scope table now, but I think we need to um, go through again because most of the charter was written back when the only spec we were going to work on was runtime spec. Um, and as a result, I think that this discussion and many other discussions like this, I think would be slightly um, less unclear if we had, if we'd say, if we say effectively this is standardizing common aspects of the container ecosystem or however we want to phrase it. Um, because I think that, I mean, if it is an undue burden to spe to make us, to make the, a description, a descriptive document explaining how to set up um, MIME types and how to, how to register new things and all the rest of it, making that a spec I think is, maybe too much. I mean, it's, it's something which is very useful and is something which um, is definitely a bit more than just an explanatory document, but it's not, I mean, it's not a spec in the same way that like, you know, HTTP is a skip spec, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a different class of thing in, in my view. So I guess I'm gonna punt back to Phil, because I, I don't, like I said, I'm not trying to hijack and take this off. I was trying to use this as an example for I didn't, hadn't thought of artifacts being something else we have to figure out how does it fit in OCI, although it did come up initially, like there was this long conversation, does it belong in OCI? Does it belong in CNCF? Because what artifacts basically does is say that this is a generalization of how to use uh, registries. It happens to be able to store images now. Of course, it was the primary, it's the majority for now, but it basically says, hey, that's just one of many and if I can store a Helm and Singularity and Azure Resource Manager templates, which have nothing that deploy VMs. In fact, I can put a VM in a registry now. Does that say OCI, although that I get it, the name, you know, OCI, C stands for containers, but there's lots of things that had acronyms that the, the, the letter no longer means just that. Maybe we're saying, maybe OCI is that now. I think that's more, I think the bigger thing that we're saying is down at the bottom, we had a really good healthy conversation of if you're looking for a promotion, uh, I look again, I didn't read that far here, but the, from, from last time, um, support and promotion and a bunch of other things, marketing, that's, you know, CNCF and others. Like that's not what we're trying to do for OCI. OCI is much lower level. It's more boring. It's the, it's the dirt and ecosystem that keeps everything running. Um, and I don't know how to, like, I, I don't see Helm ever coming in. I don't see even Singularity, for that matter, ever coming in. I think this is more of, here's a way to distribute stuff in the new cloud native world, for lack of a better definition. Um, here's some tooling around it. Here's definitely the image spec, because that's where a lot of these things are running as images. Um, but if you look at Matt Farina's feedback, aside from, um, just the, the feedback is just an interesting narrow in the sense of it's a, it brings up some valid issues. The, the word image is all over this thing because that's where it started. Should we be making this more generic? And Chris was on some of this fort conversation, so I don't know if you want to jump in. Can you, um, uh, before Chris, uh, can you? I know I read Matt Farina's and some of that conversation. Can you post the, that was an issue or a PR somewhere? Oh, you want me to just post it here? Yeah, no, I'll copy. Yeah, I, I happen, I think I still have them open. Yeah, here's one of them. Yeah, I guess part of me still see some of this stuff as, as fairly abstract. As you're saying, like this, the specs and the, some of the reference implementations or, or stuff that can really understand how they're going to be consumed as well as like cataloging for discovery. 
um, like with, with Matt's feedback, I just, I don't understand what, how is this version intended to even be used? Like you as a user, are you importing it? Like, are you, are you get cloning a tag? Like where, like just from an actual consumer perspective, like, like how is that used? Yeah, it, it was an interesting conversation because I was, at one side, I, I felt like, why are we having this? There's really only a few people who need to understand. But at the same token, five years from now, who knows if I or any other people that are currently maintainers are even focused on this anymore. You know, how does the, how does it carry forward? It's similar to the OCI spec, sorry, the image, sorry, OCI, the image spec or the distribution spec. You don't really clone it and execute it. They want to write Helm libraries. They want to take something out of an experimental phase and be able to know that if they ship it, um, that we're not going to change something. And we're not going to change something is uh, not because I promise and I'm here today. And let's say Alexa takes over for me, you know, next year or something, and I don't care. Um, then he can only go back by what's written. Since there's no versioning to it, there's nothing more than me telling them. Like the, if there's something's versioned, there is a, like by definition gives a process that the format that we've got for the way we submit things, Diana, for instance, as a, as a registration, or the fact that there's um, uh, the, the way the config object can be used or the name the extensions, the, the, uh, the layer extensions and so forth. Those are something that you follow when we merged it, the, the nature of the merge says, here's what it is. If we decided to come back and change something, it says, no, no, you can't use application slash anymore. It now needs to be just VND dot. Um, that would be a breaking change to him. Um, so he's just asking, is there a version which says there's a process that you will not break things within a particular version? We might break things between versions, but within version 1.0 of this thing, we will not go back and change the way we say Iana types should be registered as an example. There's a couple other things in there. I'm just using the Iana types as a good example. Does that make sense, Tarek? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hear everything you're saying. I was just, I'm having a hard time wrapping around or kind of mapping that to an actual like version breaking change process. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't think we need to decide that here. Let's, let's go back to Phil's PR. Cause yeah. uh, I think that's. So I think it's the question the, here, and maybe we defer this till we come to closure on that. And, and that's fine too. I, I was just, I was teasing out, is there something different between the specs, the way we reference image generically or you, you, you narrowly specifically, or do we reference artifacts and images one of the type of art, the primary type of artifact that we define? Um, but like Josh, when he had the PR that he was had there, he was, yeah, he was still there. Uh, he was proposing changing image to artifacts to be more generically referenced. Um, that then we says we really only have two categories. We have, hey, there's some specs and there's some reference implementations that uh, that we want to be able to support with tooling. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, all, all that's definitely important uh, to hash out. I, I, like Derek said, I guess, um, and it, again, it, it obviously was an imperfect uh, flow to, to only have that um, draft out just before the call. But I, I think, um, first of all, it may be interesting to consider whether the buckets are complete because I, I didn't actually go through every possible repo. And I know the last um, call or two Vincent's brought up, you know, the fact that we have this image tools repo that uh, in essence is not active at this point. Um, but it, it'd be, I'd be interested to know if, if, if people look at these categories, specs, spec conformance, 
which again, for the most part, we have Josh's uh, team's work on what's effectively distribution spec conformance. Um, then libraries of which we have Go Digest and SE Linux, um, and then reference implementations. And, and again, I have a question that I'm curious if people think we're ever, you know, is this an area where we would ever add something more? I mean, Run C, I think, is a little bit unique in that it kind of came alongside that initial decision of the formation of the OCI. But uh, anyway, any thoughts around that topic? Um, I was going to say regarding um, image tools and runtime tools, I, I would argue that they should really be considered conformance tools, given that I mean, runtime tools is basically only a conformance tool. And image tools has support for like doing operations on images, um, though as we've discussed many times before in these calls, it doesn't actually work. Um, but the the but it does have conformance stuff, and I know that a long time ago it was discussed that eventually this would be part of like an actual conformance process, in that we would have conformance testing, much like the distribution stuff. You would have conformance testing against does your tool generate valid OCI images? Does your tool generate valid OCI runtime bundles? Um, and so I would list them as conformance rather than reference implementations, in in my view. Um, yeah, especially since especially since um, they both have like a validate package, which is what I would assume most people are using them for, which is that you can use it to validate either an image or a runtime bundle. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. Um, and again, I, I think there's a group of folks that, well, even I wasn't necessarily as focused on OCI back when there was active development of those projects. But, you know, for those that are newer on the scene, I think those initially were focused around conformance and then, you know, some other kind of niceties that came along with just trying to work with the spec, you know, generating a config.json or, um, so yeah, I, I, I think that's reasonable to see them as conformance focused. Um, Chris, uh, not to put you on the spot, but I will anyway. Um, there used to there used to be meeting with the conformance working group. Yep. Um, I mean, do we need to consider the fact that we're doing great on distribution spec, but we s sort of never finalized? Runtime? Yeah. I mean, OCI was in a different place back then in terms of uh, who, who, like, let's say there was disagreement amongst parties whether we should have conformant you know, images and so on. And eventually the discussion said, well, before we do anything, let's go work on, let's get distribution in, let's figure that out. And then once you have a distribution spec, you could also have conformant image, basically go distribution and then do conformant images and kind of work your way down. That's kind of where we ended up Okay. Uh, back then. But, you know, uh, going back to your earlier points, you know, at, at, you know, in the beginning, OCI was created mostly to focus on a vendor neutral place to do kind of container runtime work, right? Provide a standard there. It's evolved over time. And as a TOB, you have the kind of opportunity to evolve that scope, right? We've done similar things in CNCF where the organization over time, you know, either grows or narrows in scope. And, you know, you as the technical body have the uh, opportunity to kind of work and define that. I think OCI has truly kind of become the place where everyone gets together to work on lower level, slower moving container related technology. That's just, just I think, what the reality is um, yeah. now. So I think having utilities like, you know, uh, Go Digest or other projects that do maybe interesting things on a lower level to containers probably makes sense in OCI. I don't see it doing harm in, in any way. Yeah. I'm just adding a few things, yeah. the notes before I forget. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. So that, that's good. So, yeah. so essentially we could see conformance as, you know, finishing yeah. up distribution Stop. work start with distribution uh, and, and then we could potentially go on for other things if there's a strong desire. It really depends what the group wants to do. So, 
It could be focusing on conformance for, you know, images and runtimes. It could be, hey, maybe we need a build specification. It's really kind of driven based on what, what, what the group wants to do here. It could be, hey, let's go bring and collect projects so people aren't, you know, necessarily building things like Scopio and their own kind of tools to, to manipulate images, right? Like maybe we should have a kind of standard way of doing that. So it's really up to you to drive this. Okay. I'm sure Josh has plenty yeah. of time to, to fix all those things once he's <laughs> yeah. He's lurking today. Uh, I'm lurking, but I'm interested. <laughs> Are you coding over there? Is that what you're uh, lurking? Um, maybe. That's right. All right, so, so back to the buckets, we, you know, Chris posted in the chat as well. Um, you know, we talked about specs, implementations, libraries, and tools. Um, I think image tools and runtime tools, you know, based on Alexis comment, I mean, they, again, I have not looked at those code bases in a very long time. You know, I don't, I don't know if they could end up being revived as starting points for a conformance effort or whether they don't really fit the model of what we've done with distribution. Um, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I was going to say, I was going to say, I, I'm not familiar enough with um, yeah. what sort of requirements, modern requirements we have for conformance tools. Um, no. for me to but like, you know, they have validation at least. So there is like a thing yeah. you can run that will tell you whether or not it is valid in some sense of the word. Um, but it definitely would need more work for, um, for it to be actually a conformance tool, I would say. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The, the other thing to think about, Phil, is like if you do remove a project, I think, you know, probably outlining a process where if you decide, hey, we're going to go can or archive like runtime tools in favor of something else or image tools in favor. There's somehow to do it in a public way where people, you know, hey, we're gonna archive this, image tools is done, we recommend this 30 days, you know, comment period, forever hold your peace, you know, type type situation. Because I, I do know for some of these tools, you know, people, I think like Fujitsu were using it in internal builds to ensure that all images that were being produced were, you know, conformant. So there may be some like stragglers out there that are using this just like with any piece of open source software, it's always hard to know who's actually still using it. Right. Yeah, that, that came up, I think, maybe the first call we had is, it feels like before we accept, you know, yeah. any more additions to the OCI, we should, I mean, similar to how the CNCF dealt, dealt with an archive okay. proposal before dealing with Rocket, you know, yeah. I think. Yeah. We're going to have to have something at least, it, I, hopefully not very heavyweight, but at least yeah. have it documented. This is how it works. And yeah. I just realized that's not a UF, UFO that shows up for Steve. It's when his arm gets near his mic. His mic actually shows through the. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, sorry, distractions. Um, All right, so we talked a bit about categories. Sounds like no one has a violent opposition to to this generally. But again, I'd love for anyone, it doesn't have to be TOB, but anyone with a vested interest to take a look at that PR um, and, and see if we can, you know, shape this um, hopefully fairly quickly to to both define the categories and then effectively um, talk about this fit discussion. You know, what fits? Should my project be in the OCI? Um, and yeah, Steve, it, it definitely includes that discussion we had. Um, and and I, I tried to wordsmith a little bit because I think both Chris and Amy um, correctly noted last time that 
you know, the OCI is not devoid of the ability to do marketing and support for projects. And obviously they've uh, handled website and service requests from the OCI for years. So I, I put, it's not directly chartered for the advancement marketing and support of general cloud native software. It, it was, you know, there, there was a political reason, I think, why that was done in the, in the beginning, and it made a lot of sense. You know, I think providing minimal awareness uh, of what's being built is, 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 is fine. The idea was never to collect a bunch of money and, and proactively promote standards that, not, that weren't fully baked yet, or specs yeah. that weren't fully baked yet. It makes, it makes a lot of sense, but we could always do a little promotion. We have, you know, budget for it. We've sponsored events, you know, yeah. uh, and all that stuff in the past. Yeah, and, and and conversely to this, to my comment here, I mean, I think uh, for anyone that's not aware, I mean, we've done a, a nice stream of blog posts over the years highlighting, you know, different aspects of the OCI, and I'm sure that can continue. Just like I think Steve, you did that for Artifacts when it was accepted. Um, so yeah, I agree that you know this isn't a statement of the OCI doesn't do anything, but kind of unlike the CNCF, this is the direct charter is not mm -hmm. focused on that kind of um, promotion. I think we also discussed last time that it's, it's kind of unlike other projects in OCI to kind of promote them as kind of separate brands from OCI, whereas really the project should support the idea of like open containers in general and kind of all have some relationship to yeah kind of the open containers ecosystem, whereas like CNCF projects are kind of intended to foster in their own brand and live on their own. Correct, yeah. I mean, I think that what's interesting is in hindsight now is, you know, being able to explain this from the marketing aspect, which I think is a good, I still think is a good rule is, like Artifacts was never meant to be promoted as something outside this capability, whereas, I remember when CNAB was proposed to go under OCI, you know, and I wasn't there yep. in, in the middle of the conversation, I was on the outside of it. In hindsight, it was probably a good thing because CNAB is a brand that they're trying to promote and have a different way of things. It is a special artifact type that would go in the same way to some extent like Helm. So it's an actually interesting litmus test to say that worked out well, right? It's, you know, um, Artifacts is core infrastructure. It's a type of dirt that enables a bunch of things. Uh, CNEB is a brand that they're trying to promote um, that lots of people would adopt it and, uh, and implement and use it. Yeah, the question is, can we get um, a type of dirt into the scope table, right? Yeah, yeah. But I agree. Yeah, I don't know how you write, you know, we, we support dirt is, you know, it's like there is a core infrastructure that the OCI is looking to enable. Um, um, so what else can we, I, I think, as far as that draft, um, you know, I'm happy to take more comments here, but it, you know, I realize people need some time to sort of process it on their own, not sitting on a call. So I'm I'm happy to continue that uh, offline, and hopefully we don't have to wait a month and come back. Hopefully we can deal with that with reviews and updates in that PR. Um, the other item and I, I know there's already been a response to this so uh in tob issue 72 um wait is that right an issue I thought it was a... i'm sorry i posted the wrong link there um i meant to post the uh merged pr that took out the scope table, um, which is actually 74, PR 74. Um, Sam made a comment, uh, I think, yeah, just a few hours ago, talking about, I'd like to see us clarify runtime yeah. as well. Chris, you said 
you might propose a new PR to deal with yeah, that. Yeah, he's made some good comments there of like changing the language too in, in kind of um, the, the charter uh, in, in kind of the intro section, which I think uh, make things a little bit more clear, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I think maybe my link to 72 was not totally unrelated because uh, after our last meeting, I basically created a few issues just to kind of mark that we discussed, uh, you know, progressing on a few of these fronts. And one was review and refine governance documents, uh, of which the scope table was one uh, discussion, which obviously we progressed on. But I think, um, you know, Sam's comments are, are are one step in that direction, but it, I guess it'd be good to see if if TOB members can can start a you know more thorough review. You know, is there anything else other than some of that language around runtime that we want to update? And maybe Chris, if you do a PR there, we can yeah. start there and then see if there's other. But effectively, you know, last month we just said you know this is a good time now that it's moved to GitHub yep. uh, to do that review, so. And that was my comment, Chris, is I, I, I saw it was merged or any, did you want looking for a Janelle GTM just to Yeah, I mean, I, versus, I mean, if people agree with the current changes, it'd be good to kind of get two thirds super majority. So we're following the rules and then we can make further additions and, and changes. Otherwise, uh, I think Vincent kind of jumped the gun a little bit. He should have been aware, <laughs> but it, it happened, so. Um, yeah, I mean, as long as we come back with another PR, I don't want yep, to get I don't want to revert. Yeah, formal. Yeah. We could revert everything and, and wait again, but I'd rather not do that since the changes were fairly uh, fairly simple of stripping out the scope table. Then I think the next changes will be maybe updating the language in the first uh, paragraph or two. Um, I mean, not to mention that we basically reached consensus in the last call anyway. So, I mean, reverting yeah. it would be an overreaction, I think. Yeah. yeah. But I already asked that. Yeah. Cool. Thank, thank you. Yep. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So that that one I think uh, is reasonable, and we we had agreement. And I think the next phase is maybe a deeper look um, at some of the language. So sounds good. Um, yeah. I don't know if we're uh, more boring than usual, but we've had a slow <laughs> decline in participants since we started forty minutes ago. Um, so unless we want to belabor any of the things we've already been talking about, um, is there anything else that folks want to discuss or have you had enough and we'll take these things into GitHub and elsewhere? You had one comment that you wanted, whether we should use HackMD or some version of this on GitHub. Was there something there you wanted to propose? Oh yeah, maybe I, maybe my comment wasn't clear. I I um, all I meant is for that getting started doc, I wanted it to be a GitHub PR so that we could use that kind of review uh, model because you started two months ago in the notes of this you know HackMD that categorization some some you know a little bit of notes there. So uh, that's what I meant. Not not changing tools for this call. Oh, okay. So it's not like we're going to take notes and, and merge them. This was your, you basically took the scrambling of notes that we took and formalized them to an actual document we could PR and review. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Yep. Looks good. Thank you. Did we, so, so part of our goal was to write this up in such a way that we could then measure the ones we already have and say, hey, the majority of a match, there's one outlier, not the end of the world. Um, I don't even know what that one outlier would mean. I'm just using it as an example. And how does or as emoji kind of, you know, fit in? Does that, do those make sense? Kind of, there's a litmus test of what's already in there. There's a litmus test of these two new ones. And we feel good that we could go forward. Because you only gave it 30 minutes, I happened to end my previous call five minutes early so that they could read it for the, before this. Um, is your thought you want to just give people a chance to read it, review it, and then we'll schedule something hopefully less than a month away? Yeah, so so the actions I'd like to see happen. Everybody has their say on this document. 
we get it in the form that we all think is reasonable as, as close as we can. Then we take our current and proposed projects through it as a filter. We say, and then, yeah, I think at that point we, we need to move to, you know, comment and vote period on the proposals, you know, given that by then we've agreed to an effective framework for understanding what's in. And, you know, I, I make my usual, you know, mousing around comments that, you know, no framework is perfect. It's not like we're going to, it's going to be easy to still just say, oh, well, yeah, this is absolutely in or that's absolutely out. So, you know, I think there's still room for discussion and, uh, but yeah, that, so that's what I'd like to see happen. Um, maybe we make a target of, you know, by this time next week, we've hashed around in this PR comments and updates. Um, and then, yeah, at that point we can decide uh, if we want to set a, a time limit for discussion on the proposals. Um, and then whatever the end of that time limit is, schedule a call for that and have a vote. Does that seem good uh, to everybody? Yeah, that sounds good to me. I was just saying one thing, which is that once we get the um, this, this the PR video open in the document that you wrote, um, hashed out and merged, we should also then, hopefully that the, that would then uh, impact the changes to, this, to the charter that we're discussing as well. Because um, as mentioned, it's it's something which, given the new linear tests, it would help us have a better way of how to describe what the actual scope of OCI is. Um, I just want to make sure that we, we update both, not just one, is, is my point. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's good point. point. Yep, absolutely. That makes total sense. Just, um, I did put it in there. I don't know if, uh, if we want to talk about it here or not. There was two aspects that I thought were interesting when I read the original OCI charter of, um, or OCI something governance that basically says that you're, you can't have one company kind of over dominate it. It's, you know, it's all about having neutrality and balance. Uh, I can't remember where I saw it, but it was the other of, you know, also not one, well, it's kind of falls in the same category, but also not just a single, there has to be a diversity on the project to make sure there has some life to it and so forth. So I don't know if we want to add that, talk about it. I don't know what other people thought about that. Uh, it was my understanding that there is a restriction that no more than two members on the TOB can be yep. um, from the same company. Is that is that what you're referring to? Yep. I'm spinning on that actually. So that part's good, makes perfect sense. So like the fact that we actually did do, or I'll use Auras as an example, you know, Josh has been not just a key maintainer, it was him and Chiwe, one of the engineers that works on ACR that originally wrote that over Christmas two years ago. Um, so it started that way. I think we have some other maintainers from other companies as well. So it's definitely not just a Microsoft yeah, so thing. Jimmy, so Jimmy's on there, but it is mostly Microsoft people. That was actually something I wanted to bring up too, is uh, in the spirit of being open, um, do you want to not stack the deck to be a Microsoft project? Yeah, well, that was my point. Having you on it and doing, I think, just as many commits, if not whatever, close. Um, I felt pretty good about that. I'm certainly at willing, you know, open to add others. It's never been a concern. Mm -hmm. um, but I, what do, you know, I did, Alexa, are you the only person that's doing a mochi? I could, don't want to. Uh, Ty, Tyco's one of the maintainers, though I, I only added him, like, last month. But yeah. Okay. I, and do you feel comfortable that if you were taking vacation that and somebody brought up an issue that we'd feel good about it? That's kind of like what I was trying to feel. Not only that it shouldn't be one company's ability to, to use OCI to, to endorse their product, which is why having diversity is really good, but also making sure that there's good survivability of something. Um, yeah. And even um, if it means from, you know, going after somebody to come in and, hey, I need your help here. I want to make sure you're, you're on board. Yeah, I mean, this is something we can hash out when we discuss, when we actually get to the point of discussing Emoji, but I would say um, I do feel confident that he'd be able to handle basically most issues. And I think that, um, but the thing is, I, I'm, I'm very happy to add more people to maintainers. It's, the only reason I haven't added more is that no one's piped up and said, I'd like to be a maintainer, aside from Tycho when I added him soon after he asked. So, yeah. So do we want to put something in here that says, hey, for something to be considered, 
it has to follow this standard OCI compliance thing that says it has to be in, you know, no more than two people from any one company, but it should have some diversity from multiple companies and also has to have more than one person um, to make sure that there's uh, enough bandwidth to support the project. Yeah, that's, that actually reminds me that uh, Vincent brought up last month and you can see it in the notes. Um, the, the charter has this uh, concept of a TDC. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you pasting something somewhere? Or? <laughs> I, I'm not yet. It's section, let's see if I can. Uh, I am posting it in the chat. Um, that I think uh, even without reading it, has been a confusing concept. And so Vincent said, when we're looking at the charter, yeah. we should revisit this TDC concept because that's probably where that kind of issue that you're talking about would, would float up. Um, <laughs> yeah, item three, we'll look to agree on a standard set of container actions. So, you know, some of this is very specific to run C or runtime. Yeah. Uh, I mean, T TDC was loosely meant to meant every maintainer associated with a project, uh, right? Traditionally, um, did it? Section five goes into kind of all the details of what the TDC actually is supposed to be doing. So, Steve, maybe your assignment is to read the TDC section and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another yeah. set of eyes. <laughs> yeah. See if it makes any sense. I think the way I think the way I've always read the TDC is that it's anyone who's participating in OCI, whether or not they're a maintainer. Just anyone who's involved at all. Uh, yeah, I think it is written that way. But then there is like there are certain things the TDC can do which require like a vote, and I think that it's sort of implied that for those circumstances, it's actually maintainers. So yeah, I think that either way, I think it's something we should clarify because um, yeah. like for instance, I think that technically the TDC can call us to have a meeting on a topic. And I like, I mean, how would you organize a vote for everyone? Like, would you send emails to every contributor to every project? Um, so I think that, yeah, clarifying that as well as maybe making sure that the rest of it makes sense probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Especially given, you know, how, now that we've done this for a couple of years, yeah. we have a better idea of, of how the projects actually work. Yep. Yeah. Good point. Um, and yeah, in the notes on HackMD, there's a uh, <clears throat> little s script snippet that Vincent posted just that walks through the, all the maintainers files and tries to pull out names um, if anyone wants to play with that. Um, good. Yeah. So yeah, that's another important aspect, I think. Um, yeah, as long as we keep sending people to Apple and Kimvoke and elsewhere, we're going to have lots of diversity. <laughs> <laughs> so. Until everybody starts getting bought. Oh, true. Yeah. Sorry. IBM it happens. <laughs> I, we like to buy people now and then, but we, we pay too much. So. I mean, as long as there's more than three buyers, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, I feel like we kind of have some action items from this. Uh, hopefully we'll get some progress. And if not, I'll maybe try and be more annoying than my usual self about getting that uh, pull request reviewed and through the process so we can not drag our feet uh, too long. And um, yeah. Sounds like Phil, if you need help being annoying, I'm perfectly happy to be an annoyance <laughs> for you. All right. Happy to help. That sounds sounds awesome. Do we want to, just because it took us so long to get the this one scheduled, we want to take the time now to try to get the next one scheduled? I, I have the perfect... It's been roughly monthly. Yeah, roughly. I, have, I, have the, <laughs> I have the perfect model for how this works. I wait long enough till Steve sends me an email. Hey, weren't you going to schedule an OCIT? <laughs> And that triggers me to actually make the, the schedule. Um, 
Steve, you can send an email right now. Same, same time, same channel, next, you know, three weeks, two weeks, something. Yeah, let me look. Uh, I think June 8th is a Monday. So the 9th, if we're sticking to the same kind of flow. Um, I guess people don't take vacations in this world anyway, so. Um, <laughs> Do we need four weeks or because I feel like we're just we're trying to get momentum to close on one particular topic. I don't know if we need four weeks to review the PR. Yeah, no, no. I uh, Like I said, I, I'm hoping we don't need an interim meeting. Uh, well, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm being too uh, optimistic, but I, I was assuming that the next meeting would be the one plus week to get review and potential merge of that. And then a two plus week um, comment period for the proposals. And then that next, that, so that's three-ish weeks plus or minus. Um, does that sound reasonable? I got confused on the math. Math makes my head hurt. <laughs> but if, it, yeah, it, I'm fine either way. I just I was hoping to, I, I'm in the I'm in the range of trying to close loose ends everywhere. It just feels like. Yeah. We could move it up to the second and third. If you put it on like the 26th, that might be a little challenging for again people that might take vacations somewhere. There is that holiday that we might have on the 25th. Yeah, yeah. What? Memorial Day. The, oh. So very American centric. Very yeah. big part. Oh, yeah, it does show up on my calendar. <laughs> so I'll go to my backyard for my. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Which is why I'm suggesting if you wanted to be able to have it a little bit closer, we can look at the second. That makes sense. Yeah, let me let me look at that week before I schedule anything. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I will. I will not wait um, two weeks or my, my usual style. I'll 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 convert to uh, be a little more prompt this time. All right, um, I think we have a plan, and um, yeah, thanks everybody, and uh, um, yeah, we'll talk soon, and, and hopefully we can get a review cycle on this PR and start looking at some of the governance topics we discussed. And sounds like if we can get that done, that'll be some good progress. So, thanks everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Good to see everyone. Bye yeah. all. Good to see you. As she right. hides. <laughs> I'm not hiding. I'm just sending Phil an, an email about like, hey, Phil, that meeting. Behold. <laughs> well, you said see. I'm seeing your very pretty picture, but I don't see you moving around with the cat walking across your screen. Hey, all things in time, he's sleeping upstairs. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> see you later. Next time. Bye all. <laughs> Bye.